Uh, yeah, I've been in Page for 30 years now, and the uh, rim to rim to rim hike that Karen referred to was actually a day hike. And I had some friends that were doing it, and I thought they were nuts, but they convinced me that I should do it. And it was actually quite an amazing experience, but uh, I could hardly walk, of course, the next day. <laughs> Uh, well, after that nice introduction about all the work I do in remote locations, I'm going to show you pictures of concrete. <laughs> uh, this is what I've been reduced to now. As a photographer, I used to do uh, rocks and water and trees, and now it's concrete, Glen Canyon Dam. And in fact, most of these photographs aren't even mine. Uh, they're pictures taken by the Bureau of Reclamation Photographers during the construction of the dam, and then afterwards in uh, 1983, when the spillway tunnels were so badly damaged by the high flows, and so those photographs also. And then right at the end, uh, some pictures uh, that have been taken just in the past year inside the dam, uh, which for a while became very difficult uh, to accomplish because the Bureau closed off all access to the interior of the dam except for a little bit of the standard tour, but um, those rules have been relaxed a little bit today. So I'll show you what it's like inside the dam, including as far down at the bottom of the dam as you can possibly go. Okay. So there's Glen Canyon the way it was before Lake Powell. Uh, this is at the location of the crossing of the Fathers. Uh, where in 1776, a group of Franciscan friars who were on their way back to Santa Fe after an aborted trip to Monterey, California. And they had a very difficult time crossing the Colorado and attempted to cross at Lee's Ferry and eventually found their way upstream. And uh, this um, fort, which at that time was uh, waitable in November 1776. Uh, if you've ever been to Rainbow Bridge via Lake Powell, this is the entrance to Forbidding Canyon. So you can see the river here uh, down low to the right and Forbidding Canyon going up and to the right. Just inside the mouth of Forbidding Canyon, there was a campsite that was established and this became used a lot uh, during the time of the, uh, just before in the early days of while the dam was being constructed. Uh, mostly by people who were coming upstream uh, from uh, Cane Creek, which was the takeout point uh, during the days that the dam was under construction. Uh, this picture was taken at Rainbow Bridge, and David Brower, the executive director of the Sierra Club, is standing there with a Bolex camera on his shoulder, and the Secretary of the Interior, Stuart Udall, discussing the fate of Rainbow Bridge, because part of the enabling legislation that allowed, allowed uh, Glen Canyon Dam to be built uh, stated that uh, actions would be taken to keep Lake Powell from invading Rainbow Bridge National Monument. And of course, that was very important because just before uh, Glen Canyon Dam was authorized, the Sierra Club and other organizations had stopped the dam that had been planned for Dinosaur National Monument it was thought that dams should not be built and allowed to flood national monuments. So as part of the legislation for Glen Canyon, it specifically said that there would be actions taken to protect Rainbow Bridge. And that was going to take the form of a dam downstream from the bridge. But it actually would have been quite bizarre. There were a couple of ways to do it, but the most likely way was that the dam downstream from the bridge would hold back Lake Powell from creeping upstream into the National Monument. But of course, um, the stream that flows under Rainbow Bridge would form a lake on the upstream side of that dam. So the way to solve that problem was to build another dam farther upstream, but that would form a lake. And the way to solve that was to drill a tunnel under a mesa going over to another side canyon or Glen Canyon. So it would have been a monumental construction fee to have saved Rainbow Bridge. And Congress never authorized the money to do this. It was specifically stated that it would be done, but it was never authorized. There was never any money for it. 
And it's actually a good thing because uh, trying to save the bridge in that way would have actually caused more damage than having a lake under the bridge. There was a spring on the Rainbow Bridge, so if you hiked up to the bridge, about a five or six mile hike, you could refresh yourself with water that came out of the Kayanta Formation there. Uh, looking down from the Rim of Glen Canyon at the mouth of Navajo Canyon in 1776, the Franciscan friars were actually standing right here at this same point, looking down there thinking, boy, if we could just get down there, we might be able to get across and on to um, what was going to become New Mexico. And I think actually some of the reports say that they actually did get down, but they were afraid they couldn't get out of Navajo Canyon. But this is, of course, all flooded today. Uh, they had to chop steps for their horses uh, into the sandstone, which came down through this slope. Right in here in order to get their horses down to river level. And then as the lake was rising, here's how that same place looked. That was the descent location. And nearby, just a little bit upstream, was the mouth of Cane Creek. And we're looking at the river in the foreground and the beach. And you can also see a road coming in. Well, this road was put in by Art Green so that he could launch boats that could go upstream to Rainbow Bridge while the dam was under construction because, of course, the dam site was closed, so you couldn't go upstream from Lee's Ferry as you once could. So river trips floating down through Glen Canyon were exiting here on this beach and then going, I think it was something like 17 miles to Wauwee. Uh, a strange thing happened, though, uh, in this place at the end of some river trips, some of the conservation people who were protesting the dam started disappearing. They were on the river, but they never showed up in civilization. Well, the Bureau of Reclamation said they never had anything to do with this, but I found these photographs that indicate to me what happened. <laughs> so all of these historic photographs um, are uh, pictures uh, from the Bureau of Reclamation and their files. Um, the ones that I use came from Glen Canyon Dam. There's a facility there where they store these photographs. But there are more up in Salt Lake City also. Well, according to the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, the caption uh, for this said this was uh, a scene that was made during the filming of the greatest story ever told that was being filmed there just as the dam was being uh, completed. Uh, to me, though, these are definitely river runners, so I'm not <laughs> sure what you believe. So you can see the uh, dam site right in here. Uh, there's the beehive, which had to be shaved a little bit in order to get in the traveling cranes for the future side of the dam. This is the mouth of Wauweep up here. City of Page, early in its uh, years. Once again, this is the uh, mouth of Wauweep Canyon. This is the first tributary going upstream from the dam. And right there at the mouth, there was what was called Sentinel Rock by the river runners. Uh, it was a rock that was freestanding right at the mouth, and it was partly flooded here. And there it is, flooded a little bit more, and of course now it's far below the surface of the lake. We also kind of forget that uh, almost 100 miles of highways had to be put in in connection to Glen Canyon Dam. The bridge, the dam, and 98 mile, miles of highways going from Bitter Springs uh, up to Page and then on to the west to Kanab. Uh, this is where the highway breaks through the uh, coxcomb on the way to Kanab. Looking almost straight down at the dam site, you can see the notch here, which is where the dam is going to go, the bridge, which is under construction, and these two uh, entrances to the spillway tunnels, which are going to play an important part of the story in 1983. Uh, the bridge was started almost immediately, and it was finished in 1958, and if you think of 
Hoover Dam and realized that there was no bridge uh, put in before that dam. The bridge that's there today, of course, was just finished a couple of years ago. But by the time Glen Canyon Dam went in, this is uh, starting in 1956, it was realized it would be a lot smarter and a lot less work and you wouldn't have that traffic on top of the dam, so the bridge went in first. While the arch was being completed, it was being held back into place by these uh, uh, skewbacks uh, or um, cableways that went up to these towers. So the um, arch was completed, and then they started putting on the deck here. And the dedication, I think this was February 1959. Um, to me, it kind of resembles what had happened down at Navajo Bridge back in 1929 uh, when it was first opened up. Of course, uh, Edward Abbey wrote about this dedication in the Monkey Wrench Gang, but the outcome in the story is a little different than reality. Just take a look at uh, the water pathways uh, through and around Glen Canyon Dam. Um, can everyone see this laser pointer okay? I can hardly see it actually. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there's the dam. Downstream is off to the right. Here's the bridge, this vertical section just downstream from the dam. Uh, normally water is going through some or all of the penstocks. And they, these are the tubes that are 15 feet in diameter that carry Lake Powell water through the generator, so those blue lines there. Uh, sometimes uh, we also use the river outlets, so there are four of those tubes that are off to the left, marked here in yellow. Uh, those are used today primarily when we have the high flow experiments to try to build up the beaches in Grand Canyon. But then when the lake is really high, so under flood conditions, we can also use these spillway tunnels, which are the most outside of the pathways, and they actually use part of the old diversion tunnels. So water was diverted around the dam site during the construction of the dam, but eventually the lower part of those tunnels were incorporated into the uh, spillway tunnels. Uh, here in brown are the diversion tunnels, and the brown sections continuing on with the yellow sections were the were the diversion tunnels that were used for five years uh, while the uh, dam site was excavated. And then also the red sections here are the emergency tunnels that were put in in 1983 to repair the damage that was done by the high flows earlier that year. So we're down at river level here on the right hand side of the river and here you can see this portal marked on the wall with spray paint. Uh, this is where the entrance to the uh, right diversion tunnel was going to be placed. And here it is, the right diversion tunnel, down river level, and they were, uh, they were blowing out sections of the rock. They were traveling about 14 feet per day, just using dynamite, working their way back into the rock. It took almost a year to put in these two tunnels. And then all of that rock had to be carried out, so you can see these roadways moving up and down stream, just trying to get it out of the way. And here's how it was done. Looking down from the rim, a jumbo was constructed, and then this was wheeled into the mouth of the tunnel. There were several platforms on the jumbo, and they would put something like 15 drillers, drilling 15-foot deep holes, and then packing them full of explosives, blowing out about 14 feet of rock, mucking out the rock, getting it out of the way, and then moving on. They could move about uh, one section, one uh, drilling length per day. Right at the mouth of the tunnel, they supported the rock uh, because it was near the uh, face of the canyon. It uh, wasn't quite as reliable, so there was steel work put up. But this is what the inside of those 41-foot diameter uh, spillway or uh, diversion tunnels look like. Very muddy places, lots of water being sprayed to keep the dust down. Also, these tubes on the side uh, were put in to pump in fresh air. The gates that control the entrances 
or the flow of water through the two diversion tunnels were very different. There are two tunnels, each had a different type of a gate. This is the west gate, the right-hand side.